Brenda Shad, acting both as a model and an actress, possesses a distinct cultural heritage, being a descendant of the Choctaw and Cherokee indigenous tribes. Her career in the world of fashion is marked by notable appearances. Her commitment goes beyond entertainment and fashion, reflecting in her social engagement. She is the founder of the Native American Children's Fund in Oklahoma. The history of the jingle dress dance dates back to the early 20th century, with its origins in the Mill Lax Band of the Ojibwe tribe. This style of dance emerged during the early 1900s and gained notoriety and growing popularity in the 1920s. Its expansion was primarily in the states of Wisconsin and Minnesota, located in the Great Lakes region of the United States. Elsie Vance Chestwin, born in 1873, was baptized with the indigenous name Chestwin. She had a rich and significant cultural heritage, being the daughter of Dilth Clay E. Her mother, Dilth Clay E., was a descendant of a noble lineage among the Apaches, being the daughter of Apache chief Biduya, also known as Victorio, and alternatively named Beduyat. Wanada Parker Page, born in 1882 in the territory known as Indian Territory, was given the indigenous name Woon Ardi Parker at birth. This name, in the Comanche language, carries a particularly inspiring meaning, rise up and be strong. The choice of this name for Wanada was not random, but reflected the specific challenges she faced from an early age in her life. Kao Ut, a member of the Caddo Nation in 1906, belonged to a people whose ancestral land stretched across parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. The Caddo Nation was known for its dedication to agriculture, which represented a central aspect of their culture and economy. This tribe had a certain reservation regarding strangers, preferring to protect their traditions and way of life. The Miami people, a Native American nation, historically belonged to the Algonquian linguistic family. This community is an integral part of the native ethnic groups, often referred to as the Great Lakes tribes. Traditionally, the Miami inhabited an extensive region that encompassed what is now known as the state of Indiana. In this photograph captured by C.S. Fly, the figures are presented in sequence from left to right. Martin, Chapo, Geronimo's son, followed by Fun and Geronimo himself. Fun, known for his bravery as a warrior, was actively involved in numerous significant conflicts. He experienced fierce battles on territories on both sides of the border. This photograph, dated 1901, portrays Chief Joseph, the leader of the Nez Perce tribe. It was captured in the state of Oregon by photographer Lee Morehouse, known for documenting the life and culture of Native American peoples in the early 20th century. In the image, Chief Joseph is presented in a context that reflects both his leadership position in the Nez Perce tribe. This image, dated 1948, captures a notable moment at the Pendleton Rodeo Roundup, an event celebrating Old West traditions and rodeo culture. Here we see Native American princesses participating in a parade, a vibrant demonstration of their traditions and cultural heritage. Ella Cara Deloria, born on January 31, 1889, and passed away on February 12, 1971, was a prominent figure in the academic and literary world, also known by her Sioux name, Ang Patu Waist Wing, meaning Woman of Beautiful Day. Of Yankton Sioux origin, she had a multifaceted career as an educator, anthropologist, ethnographer, linguist, and novelist. Born in 1856, Nietzsche was the youngest son of the renowned Apache leader Cochise. He was born into a prominent family context, with his mother, Dostese, being the daughter of Mangus Coloradus, another influential Apache leader. During his youth, Nietzsche was involved in various raids against white settlers, reflecting the tensions and conflicts of the time. Chief American Horse, better known as the youngest among the leaders with his name, appears in historical records as one of the visitors or students of the renowned Carlisle Indian Industrial School. Belonging to the Oglala Lakota tribe, he was born in 1840 in the Black Hills region of South Dakota, a place of great spiritual and cultural significance to the Lakota people. The Bannock tribe, a Native American community, has its historical roots in the Great Basin region, an extensive area that now comprises southeastern Oregon and southern Idaho. This region, characterized by its unique geography and varied ecosystems, was the ancestral home of the Bannocks for many generations. They developed a way of life and culture closely tied to the natural environment and resources available in these lands. In 1967, at Brigham Young University, BYU, 
The inaugural Miss Indiana contest took place, organized by the Tribe of Many Feathers Club, a group dedicated to representing and celebrating indigenous culture at the university. This contest was one of the highlights of Indian Week, a special period declared by BYU that year. Iron Tail, a member of the Oglala tribe, was photographed in 1916. He was a person of significant stature and influence in his community, and this image captures an important period in the history of the Oglala, a subgroup of the Lakota Sioux. The 1916 photograph offers a glimpse into Iron Tail's appearance and demeanor. Within Cheyenne culture, two sacred objects held extreme importance and reverence, the four sacred arrows, known as mahouts, and the sacred buffalo hat, called Esavone. These items were not only symbolic, but also believed to possess powerful spiritual properties. The four sacred arrows symbolized masculine power and energy, while the sacred buffalo hat was an emblem of feminine power. The Quechan, also known as the Yuma, and self-identified as Quatsan, which means those who descend, represent an American indigenous tribe with a rich cultural heritage. This community primarily resides on the Fort Yuma Indian Reservation, located in the lower Colorado River region, spanning areas in both Arizona and California, north of the Mexican border. The Comancheria, an extensive territory that was the homeland of the Comanche people, offered an ideal environment for their nomadic lifestyle. The Comanches carefully chose camp locations, considering various factors essential for their subsistence and safety. The selection of a campsite depended on its ease of access, security against threats, the availability of natural shelter, nearby sources of food, and adequate forage for horses and other animals. This photograph, captured by N.A. Forsyth in the early 1900s, shows flathead tribe dancers moments before they engage in a traditional dance. The setting is in Montana, a significant location for the culture and history of the flathead. The image provides a glimpse into the past, revealing details of traditional attire and dance preparation, essential elements in the cultural expression and ceremonial practices of this American indigenous tribe. During President Theodore Roosevelt's inaugural parade in March 1905, a significant event occurred that highlighted the importance and respect for American indigenous peoples. Six prominent tribal chiefs, each a respected leader in their community, participated in the parade, riding along Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C. Edward Curtis's 1908 photograph is an intimate and touching representation of Apsaroki, also known as Crow, life. The image depicts a mother from the Apsaroki tribe holding her baby. Curtis, known for his photographic work dedicated to American indigenous cultures, managed to capture the essence of maternal bonding and the innocence of childhood within this community. This photograph, taken by Frank A. Randall in 1888, features a woman from the Apache tribe. Captured in a region that spans parts of what is now known as New Mexico and Arizona, the image offers a significant glimpse into the appearance and traditional clothing of Apache women at the time. Black Eagle, a distinguished leader of the Crow tribe around 1900, he presents a dignified posture and a thoughtful expression, characterized by his traditional appearance. His attire includes typical Crow cultural clothing adorned with intricate patterns and vibrant colors, reflecting his elevated position within the tribe. Pass on to the new generations the wisdom we pass on to our descendants, the earth is the mother who nurtures us. Everything that affects the earth directly impacts its inhabitants. By disrespecting the soil, we disrespect ourselves. The image captures Mato Wanarsaka, a skilled instructor, teaching his son to handle the bow in 1899, a Washoe tribe woman, accompanied by a child, around the year 1900. The woman, displaying traits of strength and serenity, is dressed in traditional clothing that reflects the culture and practices of her tribe. The attire is simple but functional, adapted for the daily activities of tribal life. Beside her, a child, possibly her son or daughter. Tewa tribe wedding ceremony held at the Manitou Cliff Dwellings in Colorado in 1919. The scene captures a solemn and significant moment where a Tewa couple joins in matrimony following ancestral traditions. The wedding takes place at a historic and culturally significant location, the Manitou Cliff Dwellings, providing a unique and symbolic backdrop for the occasion. The Yamparika Comanches, known for their diet that included roots, traditionally inhabited an area along the Arkansas River. This resource-rich area served as a base for their activities and way of life. Originally, they settled north of the headwaters of the Arkansas River. 
Over time, they migrated to territories that now correspond to eastern Colorado and western Kansas, adapting to the conditions and resources of these new areas. 